Hello, hello folks, hello friends, hello people of the world, welcome to The Come Up. It's The Come Up. It's me, Nick, if in case you forgot who hosts The Come Up, but it's me, it's me, Nick Wickham, I host The Come Up. We're having this big moment of conversation of uh, what's going on in our own theatrical industry. Um, it is not as squeaky clean and beautiful as a lot of y'all uh, may think it is on the outside. Um, and so let's have a real conversation about what that means right here on The Come Up with Wardell Julius Clark. Hello. Hello, hello. Thanks Welcome. for having me. Of course, thanks for being here. Happy to be here. Happy, happy, happy to be here. Grateful to talk to you, even in this form, friend. Listen. So good to see you like this. How how have you been? I mean, the world is losing its mind right now. How are you feeling in general? I feel good. Um, the world is losing its mind, which is in some regard, not a bad thing. Um, I, I, our minds have been very controlled and been very uh, programmed for a long time. And uh, uh, even as artists, we've been conditioned to go along with business as usual. So as we continue to lose our minds, hopefully we find ourselves in the midst um, and know what our true callings are. We're at a moment of truth telling and a veil is being unlifted in a real, real way. Um, and for that, I uh, cannot do anything but express gratitude to the creator uh, for, for the truth telling that's happening in this moment. When I got to Chicago, one of the first shows that I actually saw was Insurrection. I did not uh, realize that that was your first time directing. Insurrection Holding History, yes. Oh my God. Insurrection Holding History is my first play um i we did it at depaul on uh, my freshman year i was on stage crew for it and it had never had a professional production um and so as i started to adventure into my own directing career that is the play that i sought to do first uh robert o'hare is a genius and an amazing playwright and i got very very fortunate to get the most amazing group of artists together uh to tell that truth of our ancestor nat turner um, and to blend our histories, as we know, time is only present. So it was really nice to do that. Uh, it was really, really cool. Uh, I was so cool. I was so excited that you saw that show. Like one of the first things you ever saw. Yes, yes. What made you want to get behind the table? Um, I feel like you know a lot of actors, uh, not all actors, but I feel like a lot of actors make the shift, and everyone's different. Everyone's reason is different. So what's what was your what was your reason? Well, you know, it was something that had always been prophesied by my friends. It's like, you know, you, people used to tell me I got a really big brain. Um, and I'm like, we all have the same size brain. Um, but I think what they meant by that is that I had more knowledge about theater and uh, storytelling and artistry uh, than a lot of other people that they work with. I was not uh, booking the roles that I thought I was booking for whatever reason. Um, and also, there was a play that uh, August Wilson's Jump of the Ocean uh, that Ron O.J. Parson was directing at court that I really wanted uh, to be a part of. I had to be in the room, so I asked to AD for it. And that was my start in assistant directing. I just had a yearning and a calling that I had a specific mission um, to, tell some, to tell some truths about our people and about humanity in a real way. And I knew that being an actor only allowed me to do that in a lane. Um, and I, there's a lot of stories and a lot of creativity in this brain that I, I wanted to get out. Um, and so I started on that journey. Why do you like uh, being a part of the Chicago theater community specifically? Chicago for me produces some of the strongest, uh, most precise when it's at its best, articulate, energizing work in the American theater. Um, there is a ultimately camaraderie in the community that exists and when we go into those rooms when we go into those rehearsal rooms and on those boards um we are because of the nature of the city we are going to tell a kind of truth without care for what comes next to the community that i know the elders that i've been fortunate enough to work with and the young people who come behind me Everyone is invested in doing the work um, to tell the truth of those stories. When you talk about intention and why I love 
creating theater in Chicago, it's because uh, oh, we we care about the work in the moment. So I think when I entered the city of Chicago, I had an interesting experience. Um, I was at this like top crazy theater. I feel like though it kind of set me in a place where I felt apart from I think this level of camaraderie or community that you're speaking of. The word community is tossed around so often. I wanted to find it. What does it mean? Who's in the community and, and how do we make sure that it's that it invites everyone, truly? There tends to be or seems to be a perception that there are levels to everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in a real way, right? Like you coming into the community by virtue of being a black artist in Chicago, you are in the community. Yes, in a specific community, an uh, inner circle and an outer circle, the Chicago theater at large and then the black Chicago theater community. It doesn't matter if you've ever worked at any of the uh, black owned, black run institutions or you're at the top PWI in the city, right? You become a part of the community because you enter here to do the same kind of work that we're doing, to work in the field. That is the community. When it comes to a collective of an idea or a community that is specific in activism or is specific in um, diversity of casting, those communities can get smaller. They can get more individualized. You and I both know that Black people are not a monolith, that people of color are not a monolith, that human beings are not a monolith. I think going forward, we have to be careful that we don't, by whatever factor, exclude in that way. That we're all one, that we all have to move together as one, that we're all doing it for the benefit of our job and what we love. We see you, White American Theater. Um, how did you get involved and what is it? What, what's a quick dirty, what the people need to know if they don't know already? Yes, um, We See You White American Theater is a collective of artists uh, who came together. Uh, the story is that there were three artists talking and that three became 33, that three became 300 signatories. And now that signatory is in the thousands. People who are asking for radical change in the American theater. First, we had to collectively acknowledge what the problem is, what the problem has been, and then call for no more. Following the call for no more, demands were released, which is a comprehensive 31-page online document able to be downloaded at wecuwat.com, which is a comprehensive detailed ask uh, from BIPOC artists to the American theater about things that have been unjust, unequitable and changes. Do you really think they're gonna read all 31 pages? I'm not convinced they're gonna make it through. I think they do. Is there a footnote version available? I don't know. Um, I like whether they're gonna read it all or not. They should. I would advise if my word or anyone in the collective's word meant anything, they should read all 31 pages and try to grasp and understand the severity of the inequitable problem that has existed. But, you know, I don't I don't know if they're gonna read all 33 pages. And like, I, I also, I also don't care if they read them or not, you know, because that is their choice. That is, that is their choice. If you want to remain willfully ignorant in the midst of a national revolution, that is your choice and whatever consequences comes because of the results of your choice, so be it. What do those consequences look like? Like Viola, are you willing to not work if they don't do the things? Are we willing to stop writing? Are we willing to not take the contracts? Are we willing to sit and or leave or walk away and make our own thing if this doesn't happen? We have to be able to say no, not anymore. We do not, we're in a pandemic. Is it worth it to go into that place that I may cause harm? Going into that place may cause harm. We are responsible for the greatest work on most of those stages. It is our blood, sweat, and tears, just like the soil of the American earth. <laughs> that is from us. So in some regard, is it their house?